Okay, in, in no particular order. Uh, pol uh, practices that seem uh, democratic in form may in fact allow uh, the loudest or the most domineering to take place. And so that's why, for example, um, you saw that even though Cindy is an anarchist, she very carefully followed the time limits, right? <laughs> Rules mattered to her. Why? Because this was a democratic process, uh, you know, and we allocated time and so on. Um, and so, uh, yeah, you need to, not just on a macro level, but even on a meeting level scale, work out rules and procedures. And so, uh, you know, uh, the women's movement had various rules about how you'll have a rotating chair or you'll, you couldn't speak twice before, you know, everybody else had a chance to speak once. You can have various rules like that. Um, and you've got to, you know, figure out which is the most appropriate one for your group. Uh, and, uh, it's, it's not always easy because sometimes when you're talking about face-to-face -face interactions, uh, you know, this person always throws a hissy fit whenever he doesn't get his way and you don't really want to, you know, disrupt the organization by saying, hey, you're being a jerk. Uh, and so it, it's not easy. Uh, but, um, you know, on the other hand, you don't want to uh, not have a democratic structure. Uh, so you've got to try to build into your democratic structure enough checks to make sure that it uh, is democratic in fact, not just in form. Uh, the question of the state, to some degree, this is really a question, it seems to me, of semantics. Yeah. Um, so that is, um, do I believe in the state? Well, I believe in a decision-making structure and an adjudicating structure and various kinds of what I would say are you know, political institutions um, so you could call it a state, or you could say it's a state of a totally different kind because it's not a state where it's hierarchical and there are top-down decisions and, and, and uh, you know, the, the ruling class rules and so on. Um, uh, so, you know, the anarchist tradition tends <coughs> not to like to use the word state, so, you know, a non-statist constitution, okay? Uh, libertarian socialists, uh, you know, are more likely to be, to be willing to use the, the term state. But what both of them would insist on that is that the crucial issue is that it's not a state like, like we've known in the past where it is a mechanism for control of the many by the few. Uh, so, so I don't, I, I, I've sort of stopped arguing about that question of, you know, whether you should use the term or not. The question is the essence of, uh, of the practice. Um, your question about large-scale decisions and... Uh, it was, it was more direct, uh, okay, 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 then I'll, I'll leave that for her. Um, your question about does instability... It, it, will there be instability when you are shifting around delegates and recalling them, et cetera? Um, I would think that you would want to, even apart from, rota from uh, recalling delegates, you'd also want to rotate them frequently. Um, I don't know if you, you'd want to have, you know, term limits so that you must rotate them, uh, but you certainly wouldn't want to get this to be someone's occupation. Yeah, she has my okay. But, um, would that be, would that rotation be enforced? Would everybody want to become a delegate or? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, so you might say, you know, it's worth it. Everybody ought to have that experience because it, it, it helps to, you know, I empower them. Uh, and you might say, well, uh, you know, not everybody likes to do everything, and if uh, half the people want to do it and the other half don't, uh, I was just kind of thinking, I said, um, kind of like uh, rolled into like, the managers, you know, and I didn't think that it was kind of like a term. Okay, fine. Uh, I kind of want to do this kindly because it, it keeps coming up at these things, which always makes me sad at left forum. Um, when people go, well, Cindy, even in anarch that anarchism, I feel like anarchism is about a different form of organization. And I actually feel like anarchists, by and large, are actually, I chose to be on this panel voluntarily. I understood the, stru the structure. And so for me, that's exactly how we, why we participate in things, because we've voluntarily agreed that this is the, f so it isn't even an anarchist. It's actually exactly the principles that I understand, is self-governance is us about deciding situations we want to be in, and therefore we'll decide to go along with them because we've been part of the process of understanding that we're going to do that, and I voluntarily, this isn't, I wasn't compelled to be here. Right, okay, so um, I always find it, I don't know, I just, I'm sorry, I just feel like the sort of 
how anarchists get portrayed here is often really disturbing to me. Um, that said, I want to, aside, separate from all the questions, it's reminding me I really want to recommend a book um, that I just have been, re only read a few chapters of, but I'm totally excited about, is James Scott's book, The Art of Not Being Governed. Um, and I don't know whether he identifies as an anarchist, I don't care, the subtitle has anarchism in it, but it's a really interesting, really flexible, dynamic book where he looks at, he's not, I, I don't want people to read it and say, oh, this proves we should go back to being, you know, tribal primitivist, you know, anti-civilization. But what he's really interested, he looks at over time that it's not linear, that there's been these moments when various peoples have had methodologies of evading states from forming. And it's really interesting and in how that's a constant process that's already happened. So it isn't primitive versus developed. It's actually people that have evaded forms of hierarchical control and wanted to self-govern versus hierarchical control and enforced governance. And I actually think it isn't a semantic thing that the, sta the, sta the state isn't a semantic question. <laughs> the state is a distinct, that someone needs to write a book, whether it's, uh, that is actually equivalent to capital that is called the state <laughs> and actually analyzes, and I actually think it might be wrong to have one analysis of it because I think it changes over time, but there are dynamics, like there's a dynamic to capitalism that brings along a host of other things that we can't go into here that we understand to be capitalism. There are dynamics to states that make them states that are distinctive from forms of self-governance. And I actually want self-governance to be a counter to abolish statecraft. Statecraft is necessarily hierarchical, is necessarily about consolidating power, is necessarily about it taking away the vast majority, and actually is a minority, okay, a minoritarian, a minority decision-making process. So the next thing I want to move into, in which keeps coming up, is this minority versus majority decision making. I think the minority can also tyrannize the majority. So part of our struggle in any kind of directly democratic self-governance situation is continually grappling with all of us having power together to create the world in ways that feel more and more egalitarian and not letting any small group or large group make anyone feel coerced. It doesn't mean I won't, sometimes I'll do things I don't want to do. Like, you know, today I might be, oh, I don't really like being taped so much. But okay, it's okay. I'll do it because, you know, it's fine. Other people will enjoy maybe what they've heard here so far, or some of the comments, and that's for the greater good than Cindy's phobia about being filmed. And, but it doesn't, but right, but it's, it isn't being imposed upon me. A silly little example, but again, I want to say this is, we're coming to these things voluntarily.